It is a windy day here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Katie Neal from Odyssey Country. We're on Broadway in the Reverb Room at the Hard Rock Cafe with ACM Award winning Brett Young. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Um, I know that you won't mention this, but I will. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Are it's you... Uh, you only get to uh, celebrate your 21st for the 20th time <laughs> one time. Is that how is that sound right? Yeah, know. yeah, that sounds about right. Are you into <laughs> birthdays? Do you like birthdays? Are you not a birthday guy? Um, I, if I was left to like plan them myself, they would never get planned. But my wife does a pretty good job and put together golf this year, oh, uh, this, this past weekend. So we pre-celebrated knowing that we'd be here with y'all. Well, we're so excited and honored that you would spend your birthday here with us for a totally private concert. Nancy Garcia is coming tonight. She's brought nine of her friends. She's so excited. And I know it's going to be a great show, but who would be like the artist for you? that If you heard on the radio, you'd be like, I want to win a totally private show with that artist or that band. It's strange. Hadn't really thought about that in a while um, and who it would have been years ago when I was not doing this for a living. Um, I think when you asked that, I realized it still hasn't changed. He's become a, a close friend, but still, if it was going to be acoustic and intimate like this, I think it would still be Gavin DeGraw any day, all day. It would be epic. He'd get up there on the piano and just like blow us all <laughs> Don't even, yeah, just don't even bring any other musicians. It's just you by yourself. You please. don't need it. He's yeah. one of those artists that when you're like, you see him singing, because I've seen him, I've seen him do something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it sounds like there are so many more people up there. Like the, the sound is yeah. so big. It's, it's really, really big. And incredible. he's also like so unassuming. He sang at our wedding um, and he acted like he had had a little too much. He had been a little overserved and he was like nervous <laughs> about it. Uh, and he got, got up to the piano and that's the first thing he said. And he goes, I don't even know if I'm going to remember. And then he goes, mm, you need a friend. Yeah. And I was like, you, come on. <laughs> He's hey, hamming it up for sure. Pulled, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. And then you just got back from C to C, which mm -hmm. is the country music festival that they do yeah, over in the UK. Week. How crazy is it to you still when you're like thousands of miles from home and people are singing your songs back to you? It's it's weird um, to even in the states to go to a city you've never been to and realize you have fans there is always strange. But to go to another country um, mm -hmm. and and it's I think the coolest part and the strangest part is there's such a different type of music fan. They they literally consume the entire album. They learn every song whether it was on the radio or not, and they really like kind of stripped down acoustic music too. They're mm -hmm. very like quiet and respectful as an audience. So it's a different audience altogether, but they're really, really good fans. That's amazing. I've heard people say that and they're also like very proper. Like yeah. they clap and then they all stop at the same time. There's yeah. no like. <laughs> yeah. I always go like, you guys are crazy. It's like, how? Yeah. <laughs> they're like, enough is Next enough. Next song then. Okay. <laughs> they're ready to go. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm sure experiences like that are so special and you have had so much success and gotten to do really cool things in your career. But I'm curious, when was the last time you had a pinch me moment where you were like, I'm just a kid from SoCal. Like, how did I end up right here? Oh, I, I think I still have those quite a bit. Um, I hope I never stop having those. Um, but I think I, I, the, the big one that comes to mind takes me actually back to uh, last time we were at C to C, um, which we ended up, uh, I got to meet Tim McGraw, who's the, who's the one that like made me want uh, fall in love with country music as a fan and then in turn ended up wanting to write country songs uh, with one, the first time I heard Don't Take the Girl in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we were over there playing um, in Dublin, opening for him in uh, Faith, and he found out that I was a huge fan and had somebody come grab me to come down and meet him and spent, you know, 20, 30 minutes chatting with me and, and we took a picture and, um, and, you know, I'd been in town for a long time and had success at radio at that point and still hadn't met Tim. And yeah. so um, I, I was probably fangirling a little bit in that moment. Right. And t like some people you meet and you're like, oh, you're just like a regular person. And Tim mm -hmm. and Faith, I still feel like you're like, you are so famous. You're like floating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like just so comfortable in their own skin and mm -hmm. it's, it, it's obvious and it radiates, but also so kind and humble at the same so time kind. and humble and kind. Yes. Yeah, so. There you go. Yeah. So <laughs> that's where that comes yeah. from. <laughs> that's amazing. And then your latest single, You Didn't. We love this so Me much. Too. This is a like heart-wrenching breakup song about one person who falls in love and the other doesn't. They end up breaking up and he's trying to tell her that it's okay, but maybe it's also not. It's right. also not. So talk about why you wanted this to be the next single. Um, I think that one of the interesting things I had to kind of come at from a different angle with this record is that I've always tried to write from what I was going through in my life at that time. Um, because it was always the goal in order to be, you know, transparent and authentic. It was just like pull back the curtain a little bit more all the time for your mm -hmm. fans who you're asking to stay invested, you know, let them get to know you, not just the songwriter, not just the artist. Um, but with this record, I knew that um, 
I couldn't just do a lullabies record. And what's going on right now is I'm starting a family and having kids. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I knew I had to, for the first time, dive into some topics that weren't necessarily current. Yeah. And, you know, uh, there were four dudes in this writing session that are all happily married with children. (laughs) So we all had the same kind of conundrum. And we just said, let's take a minute. Let's go back to the place that we can relate to the most. And once we all know what that is, um, then let's dive into this thing. I think it's the taking the the kind and understanding approach is what's interesting about this breakup song. Mm-hmm. The person that got their heart broken is the one not wanting the other one to feel bad about yeah. it. And I think that was the unique take on it. Um, and, and for me, I went back to actually, you know, me and my wife have a 13, almost 14 year history. And I think the hardest breakup for me ever was actually when her and I broke up after I moved to Nashville. So this technically, while it's not about me and my wife now, mm-hmm. I was drawing from the heartbreak of when it looked like for a second, it wasn't gonna work out. So um, all of that to say is the challenge as a songwriter to write about heartbreak when I'm not heartbroken. And also knowing that there's so much of me and my wife's story in this song. Um, And then just knowing that, you know, not even everybody that has happily ever after got their heart broken along the way. Oh, yeah. Way more people can relate to heartbreak than they can have. In fact, <laughs> yeah. people that are sad cannot be happy for people that are happy. Um, so it's it's the sad song. It plays pretty well, especially in country music. That's what so they call it a pity party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you mentioned your wife being a big part of the story of mm-hmm. the song. She also played a part in the music video. Yeah. Was this something you had to convince her to do? Or were you like, hey, babe, do you want to be in the music video? And she said yes. Um, she said yes in a heartbeat, um, mm-hmm. but also um, the last video I did where I acted opposite another woman was the Mercy music video. And me and my wife had just gotten back together. We weren't quite engaged yet, but we were back together. And I just remember that it didn't feel right. Um, yeah. So um, we had a conversation. It didn't feel good to her either. And the conversation mm-hmm. was that I won't act opposite another woman ever again. So I'll either be the performer mm-hmm. with two hired actors or, or it'll be me and you. And the way my friend Seth Coopersmith wrote the treatment, it just felt like it had to be me, which meant it had to be her. And she agreed after reading the treatment and was happy to do it and and crushed it. She she actually seems like an actress on stage. I look like a musician up there faking it. (laughs) Um, But uh, yeah, I just just think as a married couple moving forward, there's no reason for me to uh, use the same. And an actor has a great justification. That's what you do for for a career. Mm -hmm. Like admit. When you marry an actor, you understand yeah, that those. Yeah, you get but, it. But when you marry a musician, you don't go. Oh, and by the way, you're going to make yeah. out with some other chick in a music video. Mm-hmm. It's not. It doesn't. You're cool with that, it's right? It's not yeah. necessary. No, so um, exactly. There, there was a lot that went into it, but also she just she crushed it. She looked so good on camera. Yeah, she did. She looked amazing. And then speaking of videos with your family, I think everyone has seen this gut wrenching video of your daughter mm-hmm. talking about how she wants her daddy back. I need to get him back. Oh yeah. my gosh, she's crying and her little lip is out. It's the cutest thing ever. How have you been dealing? with now, you know, going from the pandemic, being home all the time, to being on the road so much, and then getting videos like that. I'm sure that kills you. Yeah, it's, it, um, she, first of all, she's like super good at it already, oh, which she is knows what terrifying. she's doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that lip didn't naturally come down. <laughs> like she, she did that on her own. Um, no, it's really hard, and luckily, my wife has such a great relationship, and she's such a good mom to mm-hmm. the kids that like, that moment probably lasted as long as that video, and then they were in the corner playing with yeah. whatever toys, you know, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, that happened 20 minutes after I drove away on the bus oh. for like a whole weekend. So to start the weekend that way, I'm like, hey, baby, maybe save those videos for when I get home next yeah. time, because that made that weekend really hard. That's so um, hard. But, you know, I mean, you, you you can't really be surprised by being away when you chose the career. So yeah. I try to wrap my head around the fact that I'm blessed to get to do it. For sure. And just put my head down and get through the weekend when they're hard. Sometimes yeah. she doesn't ask about me the whole time. Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> she's like, who's that guy? Yeah, for every weekend where she's like bummed 10 minutes in, there's some where she's like, wait, you were gone? Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> she uh, doesn't process it at no, all. No, she's, she's so much fun. And, and Rowan, our youngest, is now eight months old. And she's starting to like really get excited when I walk into the room. And I remember mm-hmm. the stage with Presley. It's mm-hmm. a snowball from there. Then I'm wrapped around her finger, too. And it's, yeah. You know, so. They've got you for sure. Uh-huh. And then you kind of talked about how you have to be aware of not putting too much of what's going on in your life right now into your music, because like you said, everything else turns into a lullaby. But how like how else when you are writing songs about your life, like how does it affect like your mood? How does that affect what you're cutting, what you're writing? It's a good question. Um, you know, I think radio has lately been in such a unique place that for the first time I found myself trying to find out, you know, I I never thought we'd be in a place where I'm more concerned about what's working at radio than I am what would be my favorite song off the record. 
Um, but I think that's a responsibility to your fans too. Yeah. You know, like we, your fans might have different tastes than you. It's likely that they do. And mm -hmm. so um, reminding them that they like your music might actually be digging in, doing a little more research and finding out what they're asking for, yeah. not necessarily what is most personal or your favorite. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so I don't, yeah, that the process of picking songs has gotten a little bit different. Um, but I think, you know, as we, as the climate changes and who knows what new normal looks like coming out yeah. of COVID. We, yeah. <laughs> we're we'll, all trying to adjust. Yeah. Whatever it is at some point, we're going to call it normal, but it yeah. won't be the same as it was. And so, uh, I think it, it's affected picking songs because I think I've looked at the fan rather than, you know, I'm a new artist and whatever song I pick is an opportunity for them to get to know me better. Now it's mm -hmm. like, okay, I kind of know my fans. Yeah. And so what, what do I think that would be the best follow up like. here? Yeah. That's amazing. That's great. And then here at Odyssey, something that we really focus on is mental health. We have this amazing campaign called I'm Listening that is just centered around destigmatizing some of the conversations around mental health. So what do you do to like maintain your mental health? Like what centers you? Like what do you do when you're like, I need a minute? Uh, if I only knew, do you know? <laughs> um, I'm usually like, I need to lie down for a minute. That's my life. I, yeah, I mean, I, I grew up. It's so I, hard for you because you got two kids right now, so you have no time to like. I know. Like, yeah, what if my thing was like, I just need a little quiet. Yeah. <laughs> well, that doesn't Is happen at home. So, uh, you know, I, I grew up in the church and, and my dad's a pastor. And, and so um, um, I have faith and that's kind of been something that I've leaned on my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, and I never really dealt with anxiety until, um, and, and I don't know that. You know, I don't like to say that I deal with anxiety because it's not at a clinical level. I know people that Definitely. deal with it and it's debilitating and I don't mm -hmm. deal with it at that level at all. Um, but I never dealt with it at all until the last couple of years, you know, and uh, I've really found myself, uh, you know, my quiet time is actually prayer. Um, and, and it settles me knowing that I'm talking to somebody that I trust to take yeah. care of me and that I always have. And so um, I, uh, I don't I don't know that there's a great answer. I mean, it's the world is in a that really a weird answer. place. And, and, and that's that's my safe space. That's my mm -hmm. quiet space. We're all just trying to find a way to take care of ourselves a little bit. Um, and then your latest record, Weekends Look a Little Different These Days, is going to turn one this summer. Crazy. And I know fans are always asking, Crazy. like, what stage are you at now with new music? Um, I mean, I could put up five new records tomorrow if we had time to get in the studio. <laughs> yeah, We've been writing so much archive. over COVID. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's probably three to four hundred songs uh, oh in God. the bank right now. But... Um, we did a collection knowing that we would finish the collection and it would mm -hmm. be a full length. So um, we just started talking over the last couple of weeks about getting some studio time and uh, putting a song meeting on the books about what seven or eight songs will complete this collection. And uh, it'll be sooner than later. I mean, we'll be we'll definitely be in the studio before the end of this year. Um, uh, I would say sooner than that and, and maybe even have a product before the end of the year. That's super exciting. Yeah. And before we wrap up, here we are inside of the Hard Rock Cafe surrounded by all of this like incredible memorabilia. If you were going to have to like bring something to the Hard Rock, like what would be your thing? Like you got Ooh. anything that's bedazzled You know, my thing, would, my thing would have to be, and it's been my thing since the very beginning, um, my band always does a Halloween show wearing Christmas onesies. <laughs> So there'd have to be like a. So we'd have to get an also an like extra yeah. tall it's frame a triple, for you. It's a triple XL Walmart <laughs> Christmas onesie that fits me. Triple. It definitely doesn't work for yeah. like whatever they have in stock in the back right here. No, but we can maybe wallpaper the place in. I don't know. Really <laughs> good. Well, thank you so much. We're so excited. Happy birthday again. Thank you. We're just so happy to have you here tonight. I know that Nancy and all nine of her friends are gonna have a great time, and we so appreciate it. Brett Young here at the Hard Rock Cafe.